My name is John Whitney. I've spent decades in workshops like this one at my home in California. I want to show you some recent ideas having to do with my love and lifelong infatuation with the fusion of music and color in action. This is my 486 computer, keyboards, and a drum machine. I don't play keyboards or drums. I compose sound and image at my computer, designing each to complement the other. In composing both sound and image, I try to find an interrelationship, a dialogue between the parts, a dialogue as natural as the voices of a sonata for violin and piano. When voices of light and tone join in such a dialogue, I call this union a complementarity. You're watching and listening to a few variations I've made to demonstrate audiovisual design complementarity. I believe musical voices can interweave with visual action as freely and timely as the counterplay of any musical ensemble. I believe visual design belongs with musical design. Today's computer remains largely unstudied as a true audio-visual instrument. Yet my explorations of the counterpoint between image and sound strongly suggest that this is the only instrument capable of a completely new art of the fugue in living color. Long ago, I lived at a studio in Paris which belonged to an accomplished pianist who devoted hours and days perfecting details for his frequent recitals. While he practiced Ravel or Chopin or Bach, I exposed slowly a frame at a time at my first animation stand. Today, I find that my composing routines rightly compare with his piano routines, especially his intuitive refinement of detail derived from repeated, spontaneously inventive exercise. After my return home, and after various wartime detours and distractions, my brother James joined me in starting us both on filmmaking careers. I began inventing my own audiovisual instrument before the earliest computers. I used pendulums to compose music with sine waves. I was looking for a way to create a 20th century art from early motion picture, photo and sound technology. I found a mechanical means to generate a fluid plasma of geometric pattern. I explored mechanisms underpinning the concept which today I call digital harmony. Thank you. 
My brother and I made these films in the early 40s using our cinema equipment and this homemade pendulum soundtrack device. In 1948, a Guggenheim Award enabled me briefly to explore this uncharted world of sine wave polyphony. I was propelled by visions of utopia which I shared with Brother James. Obviously, as filmmakers, we were outsiders inside Hollywood. As early as the 20s, well-known artists were exploring cinema technology. But cinema evolved from theater. I believed there must be a place outside filmed drama for a different fine art of motion graphics. I explored ideas about abstract art and film and Arnold Schoenberg's new 12-tone music theories, which had stimulated me on my first contact with modern art in Paris in the 30s. I prepared myself deliberately to create on film the dynamism implied in James's painting. To compose action by concepts which I shared with him and my wife Jackie. Our viewpoint seemed revolutionary, though we were aware of the Bauhaus philosophy of design, encouraging artists with 20th century tools and technology. So where am I now? I'm in this new workshop struggling to present my vision. I want to describe the interrelationship between what you hear and what you see. Painting and song probably found human expression well before any advanced languages. Much as the smoke of ceremonial or cooking fires filled early caves, perhaps chanting and song echoed against walls of stone. By simple communal song making centered in the cave acoustics, no doubt early people could experience the magical intensity of pure resonances that emanate from any combination of voices, men, women, or children's. Isn't this a clue to the eternal, innate appeal of musical harmony? The Whitneys want the film artist to have at his disposal as great an array of instruments as the musical composer. They design and build their own equipment. It is automated and it is computerized. They use it to explore the fundamentals of graphic design. Metaphor and symbolic content can be communicated today by a few computer keystrokes. This suggests that a powerful symbolic and pictographic word processor already exists. A mere typewriter is evolving into a music composing image processing instrument. This metamorphosis allows artists to manipulate a conglomeration of symbols, the alphabet, abstract action, pictographs, and music. Today, the very spontaneity of a live musical performance is recorded and preserved in memory. That double capacity of computers to generate and store both digital sound and image practically assures future audiovisual arts of complementarity. Painting was once assumed to be the timeless art. Now time itself becomes the essence of a visual art, just as time has shaped music since mankind probably inhabited caves. Here are a few ideas behind the concept of complementarity. Whole number ratios, one to two, two to three, three to four, four to five, and so on, make up the octave, the fifth, fourth, thirds, and other ratios of music. Musicians call these ratios intervals. They function both in chords and along lines of melody.
The exquisite emotional power of music flows from the stresses and attractions of these musical intervals in their infinite combinations and sequences. I shape graphic ratios in numberless ways to freely resemble or even parallel the tensions and resolve of musical feelings. Thus I have found a lively partnership between the intervals of musical harmony and what I call differential polar geometry. This improvisation explores a visual interaction with a great piece of music of Antonin Dvorak. Arnold Schoenberg and later Pierre Boulez wrote about a radicalization of 20th century music and art, which I associated with an overripeness or withering on the vine of classical harmony. My excitement and sweat rides on discovering and perhaps harvesting fresh growth on that vine. Music's harmonic forces are both an idea and a physical fact. The physical fact of tension and resolution drives conductors and performers into a sweat, merely resolving to a final tonic. The idea of musical harmony is now augmented by the idea of visual complementarity. And this drives me to a creative sweat. It's a gratifying experience, matching tonal action to graphic action. It reminds me 
that visual harmonies of numerous other more elaborate and still unexplored computer graphics must lie beyond these examples of mind. For both eye and ear perceive the stresses and attractions in the boundless resonances of harmony. The digital pixel is the basic visual element, while the digital audio sine wave is the basic audio element. We play each equally well on the computer. This is the composing program. I spend many hours working with this program. This menu displays parameters which control the shape of the actions, their directions, the colors, and the timing of each keyframe or step of a composition. Composers write notes on the musical staffs. Here, I select the notes as well as the action. Developed with Jerry Reed over several years, our program computes and displays real-time interpolative steps between the keyframes along with the musical notes. A six or seven minute composition requires five to eight hundred keyframes which are displayed in these windows. The action and tones of a few windows or a complete work can be played back instantly by a mouse click. Often I review over and over, having the power to shape both visual and musical figurations freely and directly, changing and changing again each part to fit the whole. There is a directness in my computer program, like this hand-to-brush-to-eye directness of William de Kooning's painting, or the hands-on feel of sculpting. Boulez wrote in 1955, rarely in the history of music has the composer found himself in a more radical position. He takes on a function similar to that of the painter. I foresee discoveries ahead, not unlike those that inspired European composers again and again from, say, the 14th to the 20th centuries. his own hands, the artist-composer shapes time to fit every subtle detail of feeling. Time has become visible. The pleasure of musical rhythm is an experience that we may enjoy visually. To demonstrate this point as well as I can, here are four excerpts from one of my compositions. Opening drums preface this requiem mass for the dead based on a narrative account by the holy man Black Elk who tells us about things of the other world as recorded in the book Black Elk Speaks. His metaphorical dream imagery with its symbols and symmetries influenced my composition. My work is offered as a brief memorial to the peoples of the Sioux Nation. In this second excerpt, the high-pitched screech of a spotted eagle sounds above the wide horizons of the Black Hills of the Dakotas. Excerpt three, at right, a calendar stone or a medicine wheel. Variations of this symbolic action are repeated throughout my work, like the screech of the eagle and the landscape symbols.
final excerpt. A dance with rattles and bells at the wrists and ankles. This might be a beaded leather fetish object. The upside down, right side up chieftain's feathered headdress borrows from traditions of the hide paintings of the Plains tribes. Right side up signifying life, upside down for death. I've observed this symbol on ledger drawings and narrative paintings in the animal hide. You saw the upside down symbol in the cave paintings, which are 10,000 years old. Lamentation, exile and death of a nation. Screech of the lone eagle, the black hills once again, and the descent to the underworld. A barge to transport the dead. Ascension and transformation by the serpent of the nighttime sky. Again, the calendar stone, which marks the year of this tragedy of the Plains people. The last screech of the spotted eagle, frozen in time. In conclusion, out of my own inexperience, I've struggled to define my vision. I've wanted to show you my ideas for a new language of art. I've demonstrated the earliest beginnings of a musical language of visual action, symbol, and color. But are these elements united in true complementarity? I do not know. I do know the union of color and tone is a very special gift of computer technology. And I expect that younger talent, undaunted by the challenge of making art with music, will find a potent voice in complementarity.